Hi guys, and thank you for watching uh, my video. So today we're gonna make, um, first we're gonna start out making um, homemade oat milk. And this recipe is was found here on the internet, but I wanna share it with you because it looked very good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with one cup of rolled oats. We're just gonna put that in our blender. And we're gonna use a quarter cup of uh, unsweetened um, shredded coconut and you're going to need um, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then we are going to use um, maple syrup we're going to use one tablespoon of maple syrup so I hope y'all are doing good today. Oh, I think I got a little over that. Okay, and now I need to get, um, I forgot to get a handful of ice cubes. I'll be right back. Okay, so I store my ice cubes in bags um, that you can put in the fridge. So we're going to go ahead and throw a handful of that in there. And then the next thing we're going to need is four cups of water. So I'm getting the water. So I have this nice measuring cup. So there's two cups of water and we're going to add two more. And this will make four cups of cold water. Next thing, we're just going to blend this. I should have had it plugged in, but I didn't. So <laughs> here we go. We're supposed to blend this no more than 45 seconds. So I'm going to do little pulses. You don't want to over blend it because you could possibly uh, make it slimy. Just like that. I should be counting till I figure that all the stuff is kind of. Okay, that's done. Okay, so I forgot to add a pinch of salt and I had it sitting right here <laughs> to add. So we're gonna just add it real quick. And then I'm just going to hit the blend again. Blend it through. Okay, so the next step I have to show you is I have this nut bag and I have a strainer and just an empty pan. And this is how I make almond milk too. So I just put the, the bag in there. Now you can use a regular... Um, I guess a regular nut bag. I call this a nut bag, but I got it at my local um, produce department in my home, in my co-op. So I'm going to, okay, so now I'm just going to pour this milk into this bag and it'll strain out anything that needs straining. And then this here, you can use this milk in any recipe, or you can use it even on cereal, whatever you want to do with it. But this milk here will thicken up as you cook it because of the starches in it. 
So if you ever know how need to know how to make milk, here it is. <laughs> show you the next step then I want to get a pot of water and you're gonna um, bring it to a boil so I just put it on on high and we're gonna bring that to a boil to cook our noodles so this is how much milk it made it makes one right, ball so jar. the water is now boiling and you're going to need a 12 ounce box of pasta I'm using the rotini pasta because I thought it would be nice for fall colors but you can use anything you like some people might like linguine. I do not have any linguine on hand, so I just thought I would cook this rotini. And it's nice because it's fall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now on this side of the uh, stove, we're going to to um, chop up this garlic. I have, uh, I'd say, a good three pieces. These other little pieces I may not put in. But I'd say a good, th good three cloves of garlic. And you just want to chop them up in little pieces. And I'm going to turn the stove on, actually. And I'm going to put it on high. And um, what I'm going to do is just brown, just lightly brown the um, garlic up. This will give it a nice flavor. I don't know if I told you guys what I'm even making. But I'm um, going to attempt to make a pumpkin uh, rotini pasta it's like a pumpkin what I'm trying to say Alfredo <laughs> that's why we needed the milk as you saw earlier I guess I will go ahead and use all those pieces of garlic and we'll go ahead and chop those up and then I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my pan just to uh, get it to um, cook a little bit we don't have to cook it very long, just a little bit for the nice aroma flavor. So in your dry pan, I'm just going to add a little bit of water and we'll get that um, coming up to a boil and it will end up uh, sort of sauteing it. This is kind of what how to saute without oil so this recipe is going to be pretty healthy I do want to show you my pumpkin so um, I had pumpkin that I cooked last year and put it in the freezer and it's a puree now what I did with that is I just cooked it and I added some pumpkin pie spice in there so we're gonna go ahead and use this up um, it got it's a little tiny bit watery more than when I put it in there but it tasted it uh, and it's still good so we're just going to use that as our base and if you're making this from scratch you're just going to want to add pumpkin pie spice you can even use a can of um, I would say like using the pumpkin pie you would it would taste better maybe or you could use regular pumpkin but you would probably just have to add your seasonings you can use um, cinnamon or what I used was just the pumpkin pie spice because it has all that already in there so we're just going to go ahead and let this saute a little bit I'd say about five minutes and then we're going to go ahead and add our pumpkin and our milk and we're going to cook that up and we may go ahead and add a few more spices in there don't forget to stir your noodles. You can use whatever noodles you'd like for this recipe. Okay guys, so now the, it's only been about five minutes and um, you see how the, the water's cooked out? That's perfect and it smells pretty good in here. So I measured the pumpkin and it's like two and about probably a quarter cup so I go two and a quarter cup of pumpkin. I'm going to add that in here. Now you're going to want to turn down your stove. I have it on high right now. I guess I'm going to put it down to like a six. And I think, I don't know if I showed you this, but it made a whole ball jar, that milk recipe. Um, it is delicious. It has, it's like a little sweet. So if you like 
pumpkin. I mean, if you like oat milk, you'll love that. And I'm setting you up here to see. Okay, I'm only going to put in a cup of the um, of the oat milk. And we're going to just see how that cooks down. I got my stove now on seven. I turned it up to seven. We're going to just cook this up a little bit. So as you cook oat milk, milk, oat milk, it thickens. And that's kind of the consistency we want. Um, I think... I'm going to keep the pumpkin pie spice on hand in case I want to add any more, but um, it is pretty tasty right now. And our noodles are still cooking. So I am going to, I just give it a little taste just to see. And I, I am going to add a little more of the pumpkin pie spice in there because it doesn't um, seem as quite as um, strong as I want it to be. So just, I had to take the end off, but you'll see I'm just going to tap... A little bit I don't want to overboard it but I do want it to have some nice flavoring and I'm just going to keep my eye on it and we're just going to keep stirring it so it will thicken but it does have to come to a boil to thicken so now we just have to wait okay it's still cooking a bit we're going to add a little bit of sage and this is all I do I usually don't ever measure um, I just kind of sprinkled around the top of the pan and um, a little bit of black pepper and we're going to sprinkle that too. So I don't measure things. What I learned in, um, through the years is if you just go around the top of your pan, it usually is enough spices and um, you can just, you know, add more if you need it. If I had to guess, I'd say an eighth of a teaspoon of sage and probably the same with the pepper. And I'd say a quarter teaspoon maybe of pumpkin pie spice. But just sprinkle the top and then you're good to go. <laughs> I just want to remind you all to keep stirring your pot because if you don't stir, it'll stick and we don't want it to burn. Okay, here's our noodles they're looking good they look like they're almost done and here's our puree and you do want to use pumpkin puree I don't when I think back you probably don't want to use uh, pumpkin pie spice because I think it had sugar in it already or something so just get the pumpkin puree or homemade puree and then um, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt to this so we we'll use the Morton's. It doesn't matter what kind. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in. Just keep stirring it. It's getting thick, so it's only been on mm, about eight minutes right now. But when you bring it up with the spatula, you see how it's starting to stick. So I'm just going to keep cooking this on number seven on my stove or that would be like a medium high but just keep a very close eye on it because you don't want it to stick I think we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of nutmeg in here too so if you've been cooking for a while you know nutmeg is very uh you know strong so this is all the nutmeg I'm using just a tiny little splash you don't want to overpower you know your sauce but you do want to give it a little zip now you can um, add or delete any of the ingredients I just told you depending on your own taste you know you can make it stronger you can make it weaker whatever you want to do this is about almost ready we're just gonna let that cook a little bit longer maybe five more minutes and in the meantime we're gonna strain the pasta so here's all I do guys is just get some you know I have gloves on and my pasta I'm just going to pour it into your pan um, I like to run a little water over it if you're going to eat it right away I would suggest hot water if not cold water but you just want it to stop the process of cooking I'm going um, in the middle 
because I don't know if we're going to eat right away or we're just going to wait a little longer. If you do make your noodles cold, um, the sauce on top, you know, that'll feed it through. So it doesn't really matter. We just want to kind of stop the cooking process. Okay, guys, now this is ready. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. I shut the heat off. It thickened up nicely. If you want it thicker than this, you can honestly um, either let it cook more or you could add um, cornstarch and water in a separate container and add it to it. Or you could even add flour and water to thicken it even more. But I sort of like this consistency. Okay, so just put your pasta in a bowl and then we're just going to go ahead and scoop some of this on top. Maybe a little bit more depending on how much you want on your pasta. Now this is an acquired taste. So if you don't like pumpkin, you know, that much, or if you only like it in pies, you may not like this recipe. This would be for somebody that really loves pumpkin and will eat it on practically anything. <laughs> and so on top of here, I'm gonna add some uh, chopped walnuts. And I think that'll be a nice little flavoring on top. So, okay guys, so like I said, if you love pumpkin, you'll love this recipe. Um, please give it a try. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, Andrea, for having, uh, for doing this for everybody. I thought that was really, really nice of you. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys' recipes and see what you all come up with. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, love yourself and others, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Guys, I just thought, um, <laughs> I'm always like this, always test and test. This is delicious, but uh, here, this makes it even a little bit better. Nutritional yeast. Put that on top. This is uh, fortified with B vitamins. It's delicious. Here, guys, have a bite. Mmm. Yum. Thank you all for watching. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.